finally made it to Dublin. We only have a few days in this bustling city, so we're hitting the major hotspots, including the Temple Bar Nightlife District, the famous Trinity College, home of the Book of Kells, and of course, the Guinness Storehouse. Dublin is a big little city. It's full of things to do and see, but you can practically walk its entirety in just a few hours. Dublin is a fun place to be, and the history of this town is fascinating, tragic, and triumphant. Dublin is a very walkable city, and I highly recommend taking a walking tour. A good walking tour will help solidify the city in your mind and orient you as to where everything is and how the streets are laid out. It's also a great way to learn some of the history of the city, which will help you understand Dublin as a whole. You may also see places that maybe weren't on your original itinerary, such as the City Market or this building, City Hall. Good tour guides give you the lay of the land as well as the history behind the bricks. Trinity College is one of the most recognizable and important sites in Dublin. The campus is free to enter and you can walk around on your own, but in order to truly understand the significance of this place, I highly recommend taking advantage of the student-led tours. Tours depart from the College Green area and last 30 to 40 minutes. Trinity was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I for Protestant male students. The school was only open to Protestants until 1793, when admission to Catholics was finally allowed. However, the Catholic Church forbade enrollment. Before 1970, any Catholic that enrolled at Trinity would be excommunicated. The biggest crowd draw at Trinity College is the Book of Kells, an ancient text that was handcrafted by monks around 800 AD, located in this building. Unfortunately, no cameras are allowed inside, so you'll have to make the trip if you want to see it yourself. The Long Room, which is the main chamber of the old library, is over 200 feet in length and contains over 200,000 of the library's oldest books, Easily one of the world's most impressive libraries, it has served as the inspiration for libraries and famous movies such as Star Wars and Harry Potter. The Long Room is also home to other treasures, including this harp, a famous symbol of Ireland which is found on the Irish Euro and on every bottle of Guinness. This document is one of only a handful of remaining copies of the 1916 Proclamation of the Irish Republic, which is read on April 24, 1916, outside the General Post Office by Patrick Hearse, and set into motion the Easter Rising. After a long, intellectual afternoon, give your tired mind a break and head to St. Stephen's Green, a nature oasis in the bustling city. Enjoy a picnic, or simply sit, relax, and watch life go by for a short time.
the Guinness Storehouse is a high priority on the list of many a Dublin visitor. The current building, built in 2000, is shaped like a glass and is referred to as the world's largest pint. Guinness has been brewed at the St. James Gate Brewery on this site since 1759, when Arthur Guinness signed a 9,000-year lease with the city of Dublin, the very lease that can be found in the floor of the main lobby. The Guinness Storehouse is a veritable museum of Guinness, consisting of seven floors dedicated to the delicious brew. You'll get an overview of its basic ingredients, yeast, hops, and of course, water. You'll also learn about some of the history of the brewery through movies, pictures, and other exhibits. As you slowly make your way to the top, you'll see some areas dedicated to some of the more famous, if somewhat odd, advertising campaigns of the past, as well as restaurants and bars. At the top of the pint sits the Sky Bar reason enough for making the trip to the Guinness Storehouse. Bartenders masterfully pour the black gold into pint glasses, and each person gets one included in their admission. While the exhibits are interesting, it's worth coming to the Guinness Storehouse for nothing more than enjoying a pint with this bird's eye view of the city. Tonight, we're taking a self-guided tour of O'Connell Street, a main thoroughfare in the heart of the city. This relatively short stretch of road has had more than its fair share of major historical events that have irrevocably shaped the course of Dublin's past and present. This, for instance, is the General Post Office, the site where the fight for Irish independence began in 1916. To this day, bullet holes can still be found in the building's columns. This landmark, on the other hand, known as the Spire, has no historical significance and is dedicated to nothing. It is simply a 120 meter high shiny pole. We are going to the Brazen Head, which is the oldest pub in Ireland. The Temple Bar District is full of pubs, bars, and tourists. These cobbled streets have long been the site of Dublin's party scene, and while you may find more locals in areas such as the Purple Flag District, this fun-loving area is still definitely worth a visit. 